Hey everybody, it's Chris Eads, Wootini over at GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. Uh, this week, um, still playing the same games, um, I'm going to talk about the new consoles, as promised, but first I wanted to mention, um, Nintendo released the YouTube app for the 3DS, and I downloaded it, because whatever. It's free, and I have plenty of room on my SD card, so who cares? Um, Although, if I need room, I'd like to say if I need room, it'll be one of the first things to go, but I don't think it's really taking up that much space, so I'm not sure I'd get much back, even if I did delete it. But anyway, it's as disappointing as you would expect. Um, the resolution on the 3DS is not great, so uh, watching a YouTube video on there is, of course, not that great. Um, my phone <laughs> has better resolution and shows better videos. Um, and you can also uptick it to high, high quality. Uh, on the YouTube, on the 3DS, is just kind of like, Bleh. so, I mean, I guess if it's all you have, then you could use it, but I feel like everyone else, I feel like most people are going to have alternatives to watching YouTube, um, you know, if not on a computer, they'll have other mobile devices that would watch YouTube in better quality. The reason I was looking forward to a YouTube app on the 3DS is because on YouTube, there are 3D videos. And you can select, you know, uh, side by side, you can select red and blue, sometimes um, you can select stereoscopic for if you have a 3D computer monitor, you can put on your glasses and watch the 3D video. So I was like, this would be awesome! You know, like when they put Netflix on there, which, by the way, Netflix looks better than YouTube, I think, but whatever. Um, I was thinking, oh, well, it would be so great if, like, Netflix started to stream 3D movies, and then I could actually watch a 3D movie on my 3DS, which is what I've been waiting to do since it was released, and all I've ever gotten are shorts. Um, so I thought, at the very least, I could watch some 3D shorts and music videos and such on the YouTube app, but, of course, the YouTube app doesn't actually show anything in 3D. So it's basically uh, useless to me. Uh, but, hey, maybe you'll find a use for it. I, I don't know. Um, so, moving on to the consoles that just recently launched. Um, I still have no plans to buy either an Xbox One or a PS4. Plenty of people do, however. Um, right now, it seems like the sales figures that I can find online they're kind of neck and neck, like, they're kind of selling out all over the place equally, and everyone seems to want one over the other, which is interesting because originally people were poo-pooing the Xbox One saying, oh, all the DRM and the, the Kinect being on all the time and staring at you, it's creepy, and people seem to sour on that and, you know, turn towards the PS4, but the Xbox One is still doing perfectly fine, and in fact... I was very surprised to recently hear that my brother-in-law almost bought an Xbox One. His wife basically said no, so he was disappointed. Um, so, but he, they were in a Toys R Us that actually had um, Xbox Ones in stock, and he very nearly got one. And I was surprised because he has a PS3, and he seemed to be a very, you know, PlayStation-focused uh, gamer. But he actually said that he likes the all-in-one aspect of the Xbox One, where he can play a game and watch TV at the same time. Um, I told him that I had heard that um, putting the TV through the Xbox actually lowers the resolution and it doesn't look that great, and he seemed surprised by this. And I feel like a lot of people are being drawn in by the all-in-one entertainment center thing that Microsoft is selling the Xbox One as, and I'm afraid that they might be disappointed um, by how it actually works once they get it out of the box and hooked up. Because um, as far as I understand, the television portion of it works very much like Nintendo TV does on the Wii U, which is it kind of connects to your cable system, you know, and gives you the schedule, and you can pick programs, but you're watching live TV and most people don't actually watch live TV. They tend to DVR everything. Um, 
Now, if you could use the Xbox hard drive to DVR stuff, that would be cool, but I don't know if I've read anywhere that that's how that works. Um, but I was surprised that he was going to buy an Xbox One, because I personally am leaning towards the PlayStation 4, um, mostly because I have a PlayStation Plus membership, so I would like to keep that going. Um, but I'm only leaning towards the PlayStation 4 because it's cheaper by 100 bucks, and um, I hear they finally like fixed the controller. Um, but honestly, for me, it's all going to come down to which system has that must-play game first. Um, because right now, all the big titles, um, like the multi-platform titles, are being released for the current generation of consoles as well. So if I wanted to play Assassin's Creed 4, which I don't because it's about pirates and I don't like pirates, and it was bad enough when I tried a demo of Assassin's Creed 3 and the demo was the pirate ship section, I was like, I don't want to do this. I want to climb on rooftops and kill people. Why am I piloting a pirate ship? This is irritating. Um, anyway, um, if I wanted to play Assassin's Creed 4, I would just get it for my Xbox 360 or my PS3. I'm not going to buy a four or five hundred dollar system to play this game. I'll just buy the game for the system I've already got and save four or five hundred dollars. Um, but eventually, I feel like there's going to come a game. Either one or the other system will have an exclusive, you know, that will make me say, okay, now I must drop four to five hundred dollars and buy this game, because I need to play that game. Honestly, if Harmonix was going to release some kind of new Dance Central version, I might be sorely tempted to get the Xbox One. Um, as for the PS4, I don't know, but they could always come up with some random exclusive title that would be super awesome. Um, and I'll buy a PS4. Um, less likely is that a game will come out that's multi-platform, that simply has some kind of extra feature, or just plays better on one of the new systems, and then I will actually say, you know what, I'll, I'll get a PS4 so I can play this game in its best form. Um, I can't imagine that it's going to have anything that good that's going to make me want to drop the extra few hundred dollars, instead of just playing it on the system I've already got. Plus, there's the fact that neither of them have backwards compatibility. Um, I did buy a Wii U at launch, but I did that knowing full well that there weren't really any games for it. Um, I was buying it as a replacement Wii, um, because my Wii was a launch Wii, so it was kind of getting a little bit tired and run down, and certain games were crashing, and one of the games that crashed rather frequently was Animal Crossing, in which, as you know, that's my game, so I play Animal Crossing every day, so I was willing to shell out for a Wii U, knowing full well that I was going to buy one later, because what's the point of buying a new Wii when you're just going to get a Wii U later anyway? Like, within a year I knew I was going to buy one. So I said, forget it, I'll just get the Wii U at launch, and it's fine, and then I can play Animal Crossing and other Wii games on it while I wait for Wii U games to come out. I mean, it's not the best I reason to buy a system, but um, the fact that the Xbox One and PS4 have no backwards compatibility really kind of rankles me because um, I don't have a lot of room in my entertainment unit, so I don't really want to have to replace a PS3 where I'm still playing games, because there's a lot of games for the PS3 and the 360 that I have not played yet, so I'm not really sure I want to replace an entire system in my entertainment unit, because um, there's not room for both. I can't have a PS3 and a PS4. Um, so hopefully no awesome games that uh, will make me want to buy the system will come out until I have finished with this current generation of games. Um, and at what point do we start to call the Xbox One, Wii U, and PS4 the current gen? Because technically they're the current gen, and the 360 and PS4 and Wii are last gen. But everybody keeps calling it next gen. Is there like a, a rule? Like at what point can I start to stop calling it next gen and I can start calling it current gen and last gen? Um, so that's me. Your mileage may vary. You may already have an Xbox One or a PS4. Um, in fact, I know someone who bought a PS4 and he bought it at midnight, brought it home, 
I guess it worked that night, but then the next morning when he woke up, it crashed. It wouldn't do anything. He had to send it back to Sony, because you can't exchange it anywhere, because everywhere is sold out. So, he exchanged it with Sony, they sent him a new one. It happened actually pretty quickly. Within a week, he had a new system. Um, and now he's happily gaming away. Um, and I know someone else who bought an Xbox One and fell victim to the uh, disk drive error. So, you know, that's the other reason why you shouldn't buy consoles at launch, uh, is because there's usually technical difficulties, um, and they'll fix that later. Um, except for the Nintendo. Like, my, my launch Wii lasted until the Wii U, and I mean, it technically still works, it just would occasionally crash certain games. So, Nintendo, I guess, knows how to make a good piece of hardware. They're not too complicated. You know, I guess because Nintendo isn't, like, trying to be, like, the ultimate cutting-edge next-generation technology, so they're just being good. So, they're able to make a solid piece of hardware that uh, does not crash at launch. Um, so, yay. So, I'm actually very confident that my Wii U will be perfectly fine. Um, it has been, so I expect it to be fine. And hopefully by the time I buy an Xbox One or a PS4, they'll have worked out whatever hardware kinks they have. Maybe they can, you know, make it smaller or more memory or lower the price. Because that's what I'm really waiting for. That hopefully by the time a must-play game comes out for one of those two systems, there's been a price drop. Because I don't have that much money to be thrown around. Um, if I'm going to throw around hundreds and hundreds of dollars, I'm buying a 3D TV. That's it. So, come back next week for my 150th video podcast. Can you believe it? 150 of these things? Anyway, uh, for my 150th, I'm going to be doing a rundown of my favorite games of all time. So, come back next week and see if you agree with my picks. I'll see you then. Bye. Thank <music> you.